All right, it's time for world building. I'm working through some ideas around creating a, an explorable universe or explorable world for an old school essentials campaign that I'm kicking around. Uh, very, very much uh, OSR and uh, kind of uh, traditional approaches here for the most part or traditional ideas. Um, but I've been trying to work out a system and uh, last session or last episode, uh, basically I took an inventory of all my stuff that I could be using and applying. I sorted that out and this time around, I really want to get into uh, the building part of it. So basically, like I was saying, I had like over a hundred pieces or 30 pieces. I can't remember, 60 pieces, I had a lot of content and for uh, OSE, and it didn't really have, all of it didn't really have a world building application. So I've put that aside and I've thrown some stuff out. Uh, I've kept some things and set it aside for now that I may come back to later, like adventures and uh, additional rule sets, um, tools, things that are great, but really don't help me with world building. And I've really kind of broken it down to, I think I'm at about a dozen items or so, right? Um, and that's what I've got up here on the screen. There are rules and then there are tools. You know, rules are structures, at least in this context, structures that I'm going to use to, to, to do the building. And the tools are the things that I'm going to use to, I don't know, execute, so to speak. Um, should be pretty obvious here in a second. Um, so what I've done is I've started to sketch out an actual process. All right, and what I'll be using is a tool called World Grapher or World of Grapher. Um, it'll be informed by the Dungeon Master's Guide, filling in the blanks from Third Kingdom Games and the D30 Sandbox Companion, right? And, and each of those are gonna contribute some pieces to get me to the point where I actually have terrain and I've got layers and maybe dungeons and settlements like so not really missions at this point or scenarios or hooks uh, but really just the building the the skeleton or the backbones of, of the world um, and so if I can hop over to uh, the map making uh, program Wordlegrapher, you'll kind of see where I'm headed because I've been I have been playing around with this um, Ultimately, I want to get to this kind of six hex level or six hex um, uh, map that will represent the starting area uh, for the campaign. I'm not going to bl blow out the whole world map at this point. Um, so let me uh, talk about that process a little bit. Um, that what's one kind of one of the things that really attracted me to Worldographer is the idea that it allows us to do or use child maps, so you can have hexes within hexes within hexes, and that was that was a really important feature to me. And any other platform for for map generation or map making that I saw didn't really have that capability in a way that I thought was satisfying. Um, Worldographer, frankly, has some. I'll call it interface challenges that I'm not always happy about. Um, but overall, it's, it's a really good tool and uh, worth the money and uh, the reasonable price that it's asking. But I'm going to start at what I'll call the world level or what Worldographer calls the world level. Um, in the D30 Sandbox Companion, those are known as Atlas level hexes. In my case, they're going to be 30 mile hexes. And we're going to build at that highest level and then drill down and we'll drill down from 30 mile hexes into six mile hexes. And that's really where all that population will happen uh, of the terrain and the um, um, layers and settlements and things like that, right? But, all right, so let me just go ahead and just do the setup here. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna create a new world or kingdom map um, there's a lot of options in here. I'm not going to, this isn't a tutorial on how to use Rotographer. There's some good ones out there. And the, uh, the videos from the, the company itself that makes the application are actually pretty good. 
But basically, I'm starting off with a 15 hex by 15 hex uh, map uh, at the view level that Rotographer calls world, right? This is the highest level, right? So let me go ahead and generate that. I'm going to start off with a blank map, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, but if I generate a 15 by 15 map, this is basically what I end up with. Um, again, these are these are intended to be 30 mile hexes. And in fact, let me start off by um, I think I'll put a um, some text in here just to kind of remind us of what we're looking at. Uh, so if I do 30 miles a hex as a label, I only want this to appear at the world level. And if I bring that on, there we go. So this is our 30 mile a hex map. A um, couple other setup items. I do want some hex numbers. Um, it's a little too busy for my uh, for my taste, so I'm gonna edit those hex numbers if I can remember where that. Oh, there we go. Wrong wrong settings button. Uh, we're gonna make it a little smaller. We're gonna go a different lighter color and a little different padding. And I've always lacked the different font avenir. All right, all right, so that's pretty good. All right, so that's my first step. Now I do have a, a starting hex in mind. Um, this is gonna be uh, what I call planes, terrain. This is gonna be the starting hex. This is where the starting settlement is gonna be for the players and everything else is gonna build out from there. So I'm manually gonna choose um, some terrain here, they call it farmland, I think of it as plains, and I'm just going to pick a hex as the starting point, and there's the start, right? And that's where it's all going to begin for the campaign. The other thing that I know is that that is where the settlement is going to start off. Um, I already have a settlement name in mind, Schaeferd, and that'll become a little bit more obvious in a moment. And I'm just going to drop, now why is that? Oh, I don't want that to override. Uh, I don't want to place freely. I'm going to just drop that right there in the hex. Okay, so there's our starting hex, there's our starting settlement. Um, and one of the things that I, I really have in mind is I do want to generate the terrain for the hexes surrounding the central hex, right? So again, at 30 miles, I want these um, six hexes surrounding the central hex to be populated with terrain, or at least at least nominal terrain. I'm not going to build out the entire hex at this point, but what is what is the core terrain? Like this one is plains in the central hex here but it is not the only terrain that you would find in that hex. But I guess what I'm trying to say is for the surrounding six hexes, I do want to randomly generate the surrounding hexes. Um, and so what I've decided to do with that, or to do that is, I'm gonna go back to my favorite book of all time, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and I've really used that as kind of the starting point uh, for terrain generation. And here on page 173 of the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide is a system for generating terrain, random wilderness terrain, Appendix B. Um, and this is, this is really the starting point for terrain generation. Now, I've read about other systems and other folks who've, who've tried to do this. They often claim, or some of them claim that terrain generation is too difficult to randomize and perhaps produces unsatisfactory results. Um, and I, you know, I, I can see where they're coming from. Uh, I wanted to give it a go. I can't think in my head that I would just spend time randomly in my head choosing terrain. So I thought I'd try randomly generating it, at least to give me some direction on where to go. And I, I guess the short aspect is, or the short part of it here is that 
I've taken this uh, random system in the book and I've turned it into an Excel spreadsheet that I'll bring forward. And basically I randomly generate terrain. So all everything that you see here on this particular thing, and again, I'm not, not gonna go into all the details of how this is created, but this is the Excel representation of what you would find in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um, and I played around with it, and I, there's probably some more elegant ways to do it. Frankly, my Excel skills are a little rusty, uh, but nonetheless, it, it seems to generate what I want to do. And I really want to focus at first on this top section, right? And you'll see that there are six hexes, and we're talking about the 30-mile atlas-level hex or world hexes in world of grapher terms. And this is where I'm going to generate randomly uh, my text, or excuse me, the, the hex terrain. Uh, this gray box here is all of the random numbers. So let me go ahead and just make that active. Uh, I'm going to choose the first six, two, four, five, six items. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into this box. I don't want to, I want to paste special. I already messed it up. Let me get a good, a good one going here. Um, what I'm looking at is I, I kind of know the distribution of, of the subterrains. I want to make sure that it's still within some of the aspects. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. Two, four, six. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste special and I just want to paste the values all right so this is what I'm looking at here uh, these are the hexes the terrains that I want to use um, we've got plains forest plains hills plains plains okay fair enough so if I were to apply that um, up here we've got plains forest uh, what was it again? Plains Hills. Plain, oops. Plains Hills. Plains Plains. And let me go ahead and erase the extra one. All right. So that's what we've got at our 30 mile hexes. We've got seven total hexes populated with terrain. Straightforward. Uh, it's going to give me a um, a pretty good starting point. And what I would do in the future, as this expansion grows, is I would refer back to that Excel spreadsheet and build out some of these other hexes. But we are done with this level, and we are ready to drill down to our next level uh, of hexes. Um, this is we just did the the uh, Atlas level terrain, the surrounding terrain. And now we want to do what the D30 sandbox companion calls sublevel hexes and world of Grapher calls continent hexes. <laughs> I guess this is kind of the, the risk of using multiple sources. Different things have different terminology, but it'll make more sense here in a moment. All right, so let's go back to uh, world of Grapher. I'm gonna switch down to the continent level uh, it's going to ask me, well, how many sublevel hexes do you want per atlas level hex? And the default is six, but I'm actually working off of five hexes per hex, excuse me, five hexes uh, per atlas level hex. I'll go ahead and generate that. And this is kind of the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about here, right? So this section that's pre populated with terrain is being informed by the world level or atlas level hexes that we just created, right? And so if you were to drill down a level, this is what World of Graph builds, builds for us. Uh, and it's a good starting point. You'll see that we had all these plain terrains. Uh, we had one forest hex and we had one hill hex. There is a lot of, well, not a lot, but there's overspill here that I, I really don't care for. So I'm really going to go ahead and just take a moment and clean that up. All right, I think I got it there. 
so yeah, drill down to just the the seven hexes that uh, are just cleared out the terrain for just the seven hexes that we're talking about. Um, let me go ahead and save this. And I will call this TNF for the Northwest Frontier. Now it's called the Northwest Frontier. The... And there we go. All right. So even though I generated terrain for the core hex and the seven, excuse me, six surrounding hexes, really all we're going to focus on for this session is this central hex. And the pieces that we're talking about of the train for this hex is primarily going to be um, uh, planes, as I explained it. Uh, but it is going to be informed yet again by the, uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide and that random system of terrain generation. And so what I've done, I guess the first thing you should know is rather than six hexes, now we're generating for 34 hexes, excuse me, 31 hexes. And so there are 31 hexes or sub hexes within this main hex. Um, and I guess like before, I should probably label this. Um, this is five hexes, five sub hexes per hex. And the, the regular hexes are 30 miles a hex. So this is gonna be 30 divided by five. Six miles X. Oops. I don't want that on world. I want that on the continent. And so I probably need to go back and delete one of these labels. One of the really annoying things about Wordle Grapher is that it doesn't seem to keep your uh, your location when you switch levels. If there's a way around that, that would be pretty wonderful, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, uh, let's get a new label out here. All right, six miles a hex, should be good. All right, let's generate some terrain. Uh, similar process to before. Except in this case, instead of six hexes, we are going to generate 31 hexes of terrain. Um, now, the way that I do that is perhaps a little bit convoluted and probably a little bit hard to explain over video, but I'll do my best. Um, let me start off by updating our random numbers. I kind of want to start off with something like this, where, where I've got some additional planes, right? Um, so I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste special, just the values. And here's how it's gonna work, right? And so basically what I do is I start in that central hex where the settlement is, and then I build outwards. And once I hit a terrain that is not planes, and I go back to the settlement and I build out from there using the new terrain, uh, new terrain column. So we're going to, let me give you an example. So hex number one is planes. Um, and what I would call hex number one, let me turn this off. Here we go. Not what I wanted. I'm going to build up and then down and then up and then down. But if I like if I hit a non-planes terrain, then I go back to Shaford and build out again, right? So I do know that the first one, two, three, four, five hexes are going to be planes. So I would think of one, two, three, four, five, and then hex number six is desert. So let me pull up. I had some favorites created, right? 
So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so that's desert. So now I'm actually over here in the desert column, right? Now, because I created terrain that was non-planes, I'm gonna go back to Central Shaford and this has already been created, this has been created, and I'm gonna go here, right? Oops. In fact, it's probably a little bit easier if I blank these out and you'll see what I'm doing a little bit better. All right. So if this was a blank hex, we know the central terrain is plains. In fact, I'm going to make it farmland because I know, whoops, I know who's going to be there, what the what the settlement's going to be like. Um, but plains, we said the first five hexes are, are plains. One, two, three, four, five. Hex number six is desert. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to build out in this direction. All right, so we're at desert. We go back. Hex number seven is plains. Hex number eight, number nine, number 10 is plains. Eight, nine. And hex number 10 is plains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plains and hex 11 is scrub, which I'm using as this. Okay, um, we know that once I hit a non plains terrain, I'm going to go back to Shaford and I'm going to build out. Um, so hex 12 is plains, then we get hills. And then normally I would go back to Shaford, but all of Shaford's adjacent hexes are filled. So now I've got to do it uh, a little bit more of an ad hoc fashion. And again, I'm just using this as guidance. Um, so let me, let's see here. Let me pick a hex kind of at random. Uh, I actually kind of like this one up to the north. And we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So hex 14 is gonna be mountains. Fifteen and sixteen are gonna be plains. We've got a depression, which is in the DM guide, it means it retains its prior. Uh, terrain, but I do put a special marking in there to let me know that that's a depression. Uh, depression. Uh, I don't want to override the color. I don't want to label. I've been using red for depressions. Um, then we've got a forest. And I'm going to put those over here for 18 and 19. 20 is going to be rough, which I don't know if I've used before. Uh, we've got a pond, which also, like depressions, retains its prior terrain. Uh, we've got another scrub. All right, scrub. Plains, depression, plains, 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 depression, plains, plains. So you can kind of see how this is, um, I'll say, uh, you know, it's it's semi-deterministic, semi right? It's not entirely telling me what hex. I'm still using some judgment. I'm using some randomness. Um, there's another hill. Some more planes, and at the bottom, a depression and forest. Okay. 
and net oppression. All right. So again, using the Dungeon Master's Guide for guidance, some randomness, um, but also now there, here's an opportunity for me to evaluate what I'm looking at and what I like. Um, I'm pleased that there's a fair amount of planes, which reflects the core terrain of this hex. Um, I like that there's a couple depressions. I like that there's a pond. The scrub is good. The hills are fine. Um, you know, it's up there in the corner, so maybe it's going to inform some of the surrounding hexes. But really for this core hex, um, I think we're in a pretty good shape. Um, the only bit I'm not so sure about is the mountain and how I feel about it. Like I could hand wave it and say, oh, you know, it's okay. It makes things interesting. Or I can say, no, that really feels out of place. Um, I think what I'm going to do is leave it for now. And of course, I can always change it later, depending on what happens next. All right, there is one aspect uh, of terrain that uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide calls out. It's that hills have a one in, a one in 10 chance of having a forest included, and that forests, conversely, have a one in 10 chance of having hills. Um, so I do need to decide, or I do want to be true to that and represent that here. So I've got two hexes with hills, and I've got two hexes with four, I'm sorry, three hexes with forest. So let me, I'm going to roll randomly off screen here using physical dice and see if anything comes up. One in 10 chance. All right, I uh, did those rolls off screen and came back that one of the forest hexes had hills and one of the hills hexes had forests. And so those are represented uh, back here on the uh, on my map. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go back to Scapel, and we just did 31 hexes of terrain using the Dungeon Master's Guide, um, and now we're down to uh, correcting this number. Step five. Step six. Step seven. All right. Uh, we want to determine features, location and type, and ignoring settlement features. So for this, we're going to use a product called Filling in the Blanks from uh, Third Kingdom Games. Um, and it's, you know, as the title says, Filling in the Blanks, a guide to populating hex crawls. So we can use this to add some additional interesting features and things to... Um, to our, our core hex here. Um, and what's really cool about this platform or this book is that it has a lot of interesting things to think about and structures and dwellings and geologic changes and resources and all that kind of things. Um, there's a really, really a lot I like about it. And so I definitely wanted to leverage it. Um, and so basically what it starts off with is this notion that the system in the book and it's just a system. It's not necessarily rules, but it's a system. Uh, assumes that each hex is six miles from face to face, and that each six mile hex has 1d6 features and 1d6 layers. And you can certainly leverage that and use it that way at face value. My own just gut feeling is that's just far too dense from what I'm looking to do. And so basically, I just upped it a level, right? So rather than at the six mile hex, I'm saying that every 30 mile hex has 1d6 layers and 1d6 features, right? And um, so kind of going back to our map, this hex right here in its entirety will have 1d6 features and 1d6 layers. Um, So what I've done is I've taken those ideas and that guidance about how many layers, how many features, uh, as uh, mentioned in the system, and uh, translated these some of these tables 
like I did with the Dungeon Master's Guide into Excel. And it's going to help me generate the layers, how many, the location, and then also features, the location and what type of features, right? So just to kind of show you, uh, this isn't quite as pretty as I hoped, but if you kind of pay attention uh, to what I'm about to do, you might get a sense of what, how I did this. So basically, I'm going to update some random numbers. Um, I want that to be six. I want this to be two, right? And so basically, here's what I come up with. Uh, what I like to do is copy this. And I'm going to paste the value so I can come back to it. All right, and then so this is what I've created uh, as far as features go. So in hex 9, there's a resource. In hex 18, there's a hazard. In hex 27, there's geologic. Hex 25, there's a structure, and so on and so on. All right, so roll to 6. Um, let's go back to our map. And if I remember correctly, actually one of the things I need to do is get my hex numbers right. <sighs> All right. So hex nine, there is a resource. Hex nine is right there. One, two, three, four. Nine. All right. So resource. Put a dot there to remind me about that. Hex eighteen is a hazard. Twenty-seven is geologic. Twenty five is a structure. Fourteen is a sign. And seven is a resource. All right, I'm going to take a moment to label these and see what I come up with. All right, I've gone ahead and labeled all those features. And in fact, I went back and labeled the features uh, from the uh, terrain generation with the Dungeon Master's Guide. So we've got the depressions and ponds and things like that. Um, all right, this is actually actually feeling pretty cool. Uh, I like uh, what I see so far, uh, but we do have to generate our layers. And so what I had done is uh, we've updated um, our random number generation to a five. So we're going to have five layers and they are going to be in these hexes. So let me paste those. All right, um, so in hex 1, 29, 13, 17, and 10. So if I remember correctly, here's hex, oh, we don't need a label. So layer uh, 29. Down there in the uh, scrub, I should say rough, um, 13, seventeen, and 10. Two, three, four, five. Okay. There's our five layers. Okay, now we've got <laughs> a pretty busy map. 
but that's okay. That's okay. All right, a couple more steps I want to take for this session. Uh, I've got these five layers. I want to generate the creatures that will be occupying those layers. Um, and so what I've settled on is the uh, random generator from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um, there are, there's a pretty good generator within the OSC rulebook, but it doesn't quite have the level of detail that I'm looking for. Um, and of course, naturally this one from the Dungeon Master's Guide matches up pretty well with the terrain generation that I did because it's the same source. And so I've thought about this location as being temperate in terms of its uh, uh, ecology. Um, and we're kind of in these uninhabited wilderness areas. And so on page 184, we've got a terrain. And so what I'm gonna do, and I'll do this off screen, is I'm gonna roll for the predominant terrain um, and see what creatures come back. So give me a moment to do that and I'll let you know where I land. All right, so I finished the randomization of the layers. Um, I've cleaned up the map a little bit, although it's still not quite as clear. I'm having trouble with the, uh, the labels. I can't quite get these labels to be different, but that'll have to happen uh, later. Um, so now each of my five layers has an occupant. Um, I guess really the only special one were these nomads. There was a, a sub-menu for men that I rolled against and came up with nomads. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know quite know how I feel about the layers right now, but uh, it is what it is. So we'll stop with that and we will move on to settlements. Now, filling in the blanks has a mechanism for generating settlements in the hexes, but I actually preferred the uh, D30 sandbox companion. Um, and so basically the way it works is if I find the right page, uh, yeah, settlements. And so each part of your map has a population density, like is it dense, is it scattered, is it at a frontier, et cetera, et cetera. And then based on that density, there's a certain rate at which um, settlements occur. So basically every hex has a one in three chance of maybe having a settlement. And if that one in three chance comes up, then the density will determine whether a uh, settlement actually happens. So I've determined this density to be a uh, frontier. As you might remember, my area is called the Northwest Frontier. And so it's a little less than scattered, but it's not entirely unsettled. And so we'll be using whoops, this column, this frontier column, to let me know, or is there going to be a hamlet, or a village, or a small town, or a city? Well, I guess no cities. Uh, castles, temples, ruins, special. So, like I've done before, I've created an Excel spreadsheet that randomizes all of this. So I'm going to update the numbers. And I am going to copy this and whoops I'm going to copy actually copy both of these columns because one tells me that one in three chance and then the other one tells me um, what type of settlement it is and then I also have a column that tell me which of the 31 hexes the settlement appears in so for instance, uh, this one in three chance resulted in a maybe there's a settlement, but it's uninhabited. So because of the frontier type, um, there's nothing there. Um, so with that in mind, 
let's see, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I'm going to also do this off screen and, and put some things on the map. So I'll be back. All right, I got the um, settlements placed and labeled. Um, and now my map is very crowded and really it's those labels that are bothering me the most. Um, I have to figure that out after this session. But uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually kind of happy with the way things turned out. Um, I think as far as next steps go, as far as off screen, I want to clean up the map. Um, I want to clean up my random generators. I think the skeleton's there in Excel, but um, I think I you know, need to make it a little bit more elegant. Um, it certainly takes a lot longer than I expected at least as far as describing it here on the video, but I think ultimately it's gonna be workable. And I don't have to do that this much. I can, uh, now that I've got this core um, hex kind of sorted out, there's a lot of adventure that's gonna happen in this hex. Um, so it's a pretty good start. So let me stop there. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey, one note, if you get a chance, it really helped me if you like and subscribe and all the regular YouTube stuff, but really like to know that uh, people are finding this interesting and helpful. And if you've got any feedback or recommendations, definitely open to that, but uh, definitely trying to put this out there so people can maybe get uh, insight into the thought process that goes into that. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time.